Hello everybody and welcome back to our YouTube channel. We are as always your hosts Arne and Carlos. And today we are sitting outside in some very bright sun. I have a problem with my eyes so I really need to put on a pair of glasses. I'm sorry, I want to look you in the eye but I, hopefully my glasses are not too dark so that you can still see me uh, even if I have to put them on. Uh, I can see your eyes too. Oh, those. good. And we are in beautiful <laughs> Lofoten still. Uh, you know, we recorded several videos uh, during our road trip this year. Yes. And uh, yeah, you can definitely see that we're in Lofoten because you see behind us the racks. Those are used to hang fish to yeah. dry in the air. So uh, it is pretty much a big characteristic of the, the Lofoten Islands and um, this is the best drying place uh, for fish in the whole world. But um, we're not going to talk about making fish, are we? No, we're not. Maybe we should. Uh, I don't know, <laughs> we're not that good at making fish, but no. we can make... Uh, we're going to talk about uh, regia yarn. Yeah, making yarn. Yarn. Yes. We know how to make the pattern. Mm, yes. Or Almost. Yeah, so we'll explain the <laughs> explain. procedure to, for you guys, the inspiration and everything. Uh, and we are doing this because a lot of people have been asking, uh, how is the regia yarn, you know, how do you make it? How does it work? Uh, and we're going to explain you the process. Now, to start with, um, we only do the creative part. Uh, so we have nothing to do with the technological part. And it's very important to understand that the regia yarn is an engineered yarn. So it is actually made by machines that are operated by engineers. Uh, so all we do is we do a creative uh, piece and then hand it over to the engineers and then they fix the rest. So it's kind of like that's the, that's the basic, the easy explanation. Mm. Uh, but it's actually more than that. Mm. Um, if we start with templates, Arne? Yeah, because like when we when we have an idea and we want to start to work with the design, first we first we have to have an inspiration, mm -hmm. and we've been using Edvard Munch a lot, the Norwegian painter. That was our first inspiration. The first inspiration, and I think we made, didn't we make two with Edvard Munch? We did only, two series. I think we did two series yeah, with Edvard Munch. Two series with Edvard Munch. Then we did the. Um, the series that was inspired by the Beltestak Belte from, from uh, Telemark, Telemark, which is a belt on a folk costume with different, uh, it's like woven very finely, but it's a big uh, woven belt. It's kind of like a Japanese obi belt. The difference is that in the Norwegian costume, the belt is worn with the, with the ends on the front. But it's mm. still the same principle, woven. like a very big, uh, wide belt. They're very beautiful. Yeah. Then uh, we left the art world and we left the folk costume world and we went to mountains, mountains and, fjords, and fjords, where we were looking at uh, mountains and fjords and uh, thinking that it would be great to get an effect that kind of reminded of that and then make them in different kinds of weathers. Yeah, kind of how they look in different Yeah, weathers. how they look under the midnight sun, how they look under the aurora borealis and how they look on a in the fall, fall day, in a winter day and so on. So that's how we start the yeah. design work. Wait, wait, wait. And then we did Gargia. The yeah, that, final effect that we also have that's here. That's from the ice. Yeah, Garga is kind of like the icebergs and the things of Antarctica and, and all that. So, so when we design a regia yarn, we always start with an idea. Yeah. First you have to have the idea and then we come up with the pattern. Yeah. And, and we, we don't have to because regia no, has a template. They have, they have a temp template, but we don't use the template. We make our own template. Yes. So we... We, we more or less draw a knitted pattern and then when we send it to Regia, they try to copy what we made. Yeah. So it's not exactly how it looked when it came from us. They make a version of it because it's not possible to get it yeah. exactly like we do it. But then they make a lot of samples and show it to us. Yeah. So, so, so they create, we create a template for them, uh, send it to Regia with our idea and um, Sometimes we send them the color codes as well. Sometimes we only send them a, a kind of a, a color code. So it's, it's just one color combination. And then once we get the template that we want, the way it's supposed to look, we start putting the colors. Uh, th that depends on, on, um, on how difficult the process is. Mm. Uh, and it can be difficult sometimes, like yeah. if we do the pattern and one, like one of, when we're working on the, on the templates, it's like you say, if, if I put the colors, it's really hard to see how the whole, mm. the overview. 
So it's very good, like, if I'm, I make the first sketches for the colors, then Carlos look at it, and then he changes everything. Because yeah. when you, if you constantly work on one project yourself, it's really hard, you kind of get blind, you yeah. don't see it, actually. But when you give it to, like, if I give it to Carlos, then he sees it with new eyes, fresh eyes. Yeah, so my role, my role in the regular design process is more of the coloring. So I do all the coloring. Um, I make sure that the colors uh, work together. I make sure that they're coded right. Um, and I make sure that they get that look that we want for each uh, mm. collection. Now the template, if we go back to the template quickly, uh, sometimes it goes really well. Mountains and fjords, uh, we got straight away uh, and we got it right straight away. Gargia, I think we were going back and forth for six months or even more, mm. and we were not happy. Every time it came back, it was like, oh God, no, but no, I think no. It came out really nice. In the end, it came out really nice, uh, but this is a lot of this is a lot of time and a lot of effort and a lot of you know you're looking at the at what you have designed originally, the template that you are creative you have created, and then you're looking at what comes out. Mm. And we want a pattern. We just we don't want to have stripes only stripes and dots because mm. you can find the self-patterning yarn all over them. yeah and but you and you get stripes mm. and, or dots so the engineers once they once we send them the template the engineers have to work really really hard uh, because not only does it have to look like we have kind of envisioned it or Sometimes we just have to have the essence of, you know, it's just the essence of what we have envisioned, but it looks completely different from our template. Uh, and that's a big challenging job. But there's another challenging job, and it is whether you can actually get the pattern regardless of tension and regardless of sock yarn or mm. sock size or foot size. So all that has to be tested before uh, it can be um, determined. And I have here the sample page uh, that we get uh, from the engineers that we have to evaluate each time we are working on a new design. So if we put this here, um, this, this sample page may not... Oops, we got a bird. <laughs> and you like birds, don't yeah. you? Yeah. <laughs> anyway, this sample page uh, may not tell you much, uh, but... Oh my... <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> One more time. <laughs> She's a little bit cranky today. Yeah. Maybe we are too close to her eggs or... Who knows? Yeah. I wish Freya was here. She would have chased her away immediately. That's the inspiration for a new collection. Yeah, the birds. The birds. Anyway, uh, this template may not give you much information, but from this template we can actually see uh, how many stitches are cast uh, for and how it will look in different sizes. So we've got everything from uh, 72 stitches to 60 stitches there. Hmm. Uh, and we can actually see uh, that the design works and yeah. then it will work. If it works on these, we know that it will work on everything in between as well. So this is kind of like the template that we get from the engineers that kind of reassures us that things are going uh, the way they should. So that's why it takes time. That's why it takes time. So, yeah. so once the template is, uh, is done, and uh, in this particular case, um, it does look like uh, it could have been this one here, as you can see. So this one here we've already color coded, uh, and this was done quite quickly in the process. And then we decided that we wanted to keep it. Yeah. So we kept it. And then we developed six different colorways. And the, and the Garia colors have a little bit of a, I mean, they're, they're, um, they're more earth colors. Yeah. Uh, one, one set is like more the earth colors. And then we've got some that kind of resemble the cold sea and the, and the mountains in, um, in the North Pole or in Svalbard, Svalbard or wherever. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so that, that's one. Uh, the mountains and fjords. This is uh, this is the mountain and the fjord. I'm sure you can see it if uh, if you uh, take a close look and use your imagination. Yeah. Uh, you've got the mountains and fjords uh, in a uh, beautiful uh, winter day. It's like a this is a cold a winter. cold winter day. <laughs> uh, and here you've got it uh, during a. Um, uh, yeah, how to say this one? This it could is be like a, in uh, autumn. Like a storm, it could maybe? be a storm, yes. or it could be 
late at night, mm -hmm. in the summer. Yeah. So use we, your imagination. Yeah, exactly. Use your <laughs> imagination. So we color code all of this with the different codes for the different colors. And we work with the Pantone TPX uh, system. TPX is for textiles. So there's many different kinds of systems, but this is the one we work. So basically what we have to do is we have to find the right code for the color that we want. Uh, we have to evaluate what that code for that color will look like together with other colors um, and then we have to do that actually in our heads mm. and this is the part that Arne, Arne will bring suggestions to the table and then I will look at them and I will um, evaluate whether they will you know envision them in real life because it's all worked uh, theoretically and on a computer screen mm. and, and what you see in a computer is completely different to what you see in real life yeah, and there's another good thing because like you remember what we did yes before I, I never remember. Mm. So sometimes I can do a color combination and then Carlos is telling me like, no, you can't have, we can't have that one because it's too similar to the one we made. Like yeah, and two, then I pull it out of my ago. archive in my memory. Yeah. yeah. So I, I have problems remembering what we're doing mm. because we're doing so many designs all the time. Yeah. So, well, but you are more. Yeah. I mean, I, this is really what I do. This is what I do in the design process. So, mm. and then of course, uh, the, there's always the question: How many colors do you want to work with? Um, we can work with maximum eight colors, and perfect, we can work with seven because then the eighth color is the yellow thread, which we cannot, we cannot have a color that is similar to the yellow thread color because then that screws up the machine and the computers don't understand that. So we always have to stay away from that color. Um, we do uh, anything from four to eight colors. I, I don't think we've ever done eight colors. I think that uh, for, the, for the Edward Munch collection, the first one, we did seven. Um, we did six colors on uh, three of them and we actually did seven colors on, on the other three. Mm -hmm. For Mountains and Fjords and Gargia, we have done four colors. And also for the perfect, uh, we've done five colors that would include the yellow thread. And then See, there's you, other. You remember? Yeah, yeah, I remember. And then there's other <laughs> things that we have to take consideration of. Black and white close together, we cannot use because then the yarn comes out like it looks dirty. So we always have to avoid uh, working with very bright white or very dark black. So if we want black in the effect, it has to be a, like a dark gray, like a pretty dark gray. If we want to work with white, we actually have to go to beige or blue and they have to be like these washed out beiges and blues. So mm. never, never work with pure white because it will look dirty when, when, when you, because it's all printed. So the, the yarn is then uh, printed uh, with the different colors on it. It's not dyed and it's done in a, in a, in a way that it's all very particular, you know, mm. which direction or sorry, which, yeah, in which order each color will be printed. Uh, depending on the design when you knit it. So mm -hmm. it's all calculated with very complex mathematical formulas. So the engineers, they, they have the template, so they have this. Once we have approved this, they will punch this into their computers and then the computers will calculate where on the thread. Uh, the yarn so where on the thread the color is printed. will they punch or print uh, the color? And this print is done is such high quality that it actually goes through the yarn all the way uh, making it really look like it's uh, it's dyed um, so that's pretty much the process mm. uh, and then we have the artistic point of view I mean okay let's do perfect quickly as well Th this <laughs> one here the perfect one here is um, we've explained this before the the solid blue on the on the um, on the cuff the heel and the toe will uh, will actually determine what the sock looks like. Yeah. And do you remember the inspiration for this particular perfect design? That's a good question. I do. You do? Yes. I, I, I really don't. We, oh, yeah. It's a sweater. A, it's an old sweater. Yes. We took an old That's sweater. True. We took an old sweater that has the lice going up. And then it has a, uh, a yoke. Is that like a Norwegian sweater we bought? No, in... it's the Woolrich sweater. The beige, red and brown one. The one we found in... Um, Japan? Yeah, the one I'm wearing in Knitted Birds. Yeah. Yeah. We took that sweater and we kind of took the <laughs> essence of the sweater and we put it in a sock. So that's pretty cool, isn't it? It's cool. I guess. But I don't know how you remember everything. Well, this is, this is what we do. <laughs> huh? it's, it's very important work for us. But there's one thing I know. Like, if you want to buy the yarn from us, you have to look for 
our name. And our photo. And there's a picture and it says the sign line and Arne and Carlos because we have had like questions from people who bought self-coloring yarn and they wonder what they did wrong. And it's not even the yarn and we designed. It's not our yarn. So maybe we're good in commercials. Marketing. Marketing. Yeah, because every time people see a ball of yarn, they think it's ours. Yeah, but it's not. We only... look for the name, then we can answer you. And even if people call this the Arne and Carlos yarn, it's not our yarn, it's Regia. Regia is the manufacturer, Regia is the uh, wholesaler, it's the distributor, it's everything. We only design for them on a freelance basis, but it's their product. Mm. So Arne, I want to, you know, show this too? Yeah, I want to go back to the first collection that we did for Regia because it was so amazing. Yeah. So we have the, we went to the Monk Museum in Oslo and bought this book with all the paintings and we've been walking around in the museum and we picked the scream for this sock. Yeah, we picked so, six different uh, paintings and we kind of colored the socks using the colors from the painting. So this is the scream. Trying to get as, um, as close as possible. It's very, very difficult because a canvas painted with oil is a complete different texture than a yarn which is printed. So you can't just take a picture and take it. I mean, obviously you couldn't take the screen to Regia and say, do this. No. You need to kind of work out how the, um, how the sock yarn is going to look. And you have to do that in your brain. And you have to make a decision. You have to take some of the colors from mm. a painting. You can't take every color and you can't yeah. take every yellow or every, you have to choose. And I look for the colors. Um, I look at the paintings uh, at the museum. I look in the books and then I have these, you know, cards with, with all the all the colors and all the codes. And then it's, I'm looking at, I don't know how many thousands of colors, trying to choose the right one, which is quite, quite tricky. Yeah. But it's actually one of my favorite things to do, color code uh, I think sock yarns. That. I love yeah. color coding <laughs> sock yarns. So yeah, so here is the, here is the scream. And um, again, we're not looking to copy the painting exactly, but we're looking to bring the essence of the screen into the sock yarn and try to find the colors that actually will work. Even if they're not the same shades, like even if these may be a little bit brighter, it's still when you see the, the, the sock yarn and when you see the painting, you can immediately deduct that these two go together. Mm -hmm. and, and then, then sometimes like the other one that the we have one. with us. That is this one and that is inspired of the self portraits. Yes. Which is this picture. However, when we were working on this one, we were told that we couldn't use the yellow because of the perfect thread. Uh, it confuses the machines. So for this one, we actually were told to remove the, um, the yellow parts. Hmm. So um, it, in the end, it didn't, you can't quite see that it's the same, um, it's the same painting as the, as the, but, the inspiration. but it's the inspiration behind it. And actually when the yellow was in it, you would have identified it quite immediately. But you still have the orange in the painting. Yeah. In you do, sense. yeah. You have the orange and you have the black and the red, mm -hmm. and then you have those blue shades. But the black in the sock is not as black as the black in the painting. So this is more... Yeah, this is like a mm -hmm. gr dark gray like brown. And it's because you can't use black for, for dyeing sock yarn due to the uh, restrictions that they have in terms of the way the colors come out. Mm -hmm. And if you would have had the black and then the white here, you wouldn't have been able to see this at all. It would just be like a blurry, blurry line. So yeah, so that's how we color the yarns. That's how we work with inspiration. We've got everything from nature to sweaters to paintings, paintings. and folk costumes. And then we make these sock yarns or Regia makes these sock yarns that are enjoyed by people from all over the world. Yeah. And uh, we enjoy doing it <laughs> ourselves. We keep knitting these um, these socks ourselves all the time. This is one that we did and we're on the second one now. So yeah, I never get tired of knitting socks, do no, you? No, there's always need for a sock. So I so, think that's it for yeah, this time. I don't know if it's clearer <laughs> for, for you how we actually do it. And I think that, I mean, we've been doing it now for five years and I think that the hardest one was the first one. So. Yeah. Doing the first Regia design line uh, was really the hard one. And after that, when you kind of learn uh, from mistakes and you learn by communicating with the engineers, you learn 
by talking to Regia about the possibilities, what is possible and what is not possible, things get better and better and um, it kind of improves more and more. And also, uh, finally, a final word, uh, technology improves as well because back in five years ago, it was very difficult to get uh, designs that were tall. They could be wide, but they couldn't be very tall because the machines would not be able to translate that into where to dye the threads. But nowadays, we're able to get much, much taller designs, as you can see from Gargia here. Uh, yeah, so as you can see from Gargia here, you can get much taller designs than you could five years ago. Yeah. So things get better and it makes it very exciting for us. I guess we'll be making Regia sock yarns as long as Regia wants us. Yeah. I hope so. There's no reason not to do it if they want us. Yeah. yeah. So if you've been a knitter <laughs> of Regia sock yarns and if you've knitted Arne and Carlos yarns, it would be fun for us to know which is your favorite one. Is it the original one, the, the Scream or the um, uh, Self Portrait, which is now called Fall Night? Or do you, more, do you go more for the, na the nature ones, the, inspired, the ones inspired by mountains and fjords or glaciers? Let us know in the comments field. We're really interested to know, aren't we? We are. Okay. <laughs> okay. So I could talk about <laughs> Regia the whole day. It is one of the things that makes my job amazing. I love designing Regia, but I can't talk more no. because and it's so warm, I'm yeah. going to bore people to death. <laughs> so why don't we just do the formalities, Arne, and I'll leave those to you yeah. so I can catch my breath. Yes. So, if you like the video, put your thumbs up and uh, remember to put on your notifications because then you get a message every time there's a new video out and please subscribe because then you won't lose a single well, episode. subscribe because it's a lot of fun. And it's a lot of fun. Yeah. Did that, did, was that correct? Yeah, yeah. absolutely. So, uh, dear friends, uh, thank you so much for watching and uh, I'm going to put these glasses back on. <laughs> <laughs> and see you again next time. <laughs> Bye. Bye.